what we are developing is a, a drug. So a vaccine is something that you give a, a person before the infection. A drug is something you get. You can take prophylactically before, uh, but not much more time before uh, getting exposed to a virus. So if you are a nurse, you could get it every two hours, you could get something for that. But more often than not, drugs are things that we take once we have symptoms. What my lab has been trying to do for the last 10 years is, you know, going after, if you want a dream, that of having a broad spectrum antiviral drug. So a drug that works against many, many viruses. The drug is an enabler of a vaccine, either because it helps or because in a case where the vaccine doesn't exist, it buys time for the vaccine to be developed, okay? That has to be clear. We are not saying that the drug should replace the vaccine in no way. We have one molecule that works from uh, in vitro to, that is able to block viruses very diverse, going from HIV to dengue to Zika to um, uh, RSV, respiratory syncytial virus, to herpes simplex one and two. So very different viruses and still the same drug is doing it, right? That's the beauty of a broad spectrum approach. We hope that that drug or others we have in the lab will work on coronavirus. For us, the key is big broad spectrum. Why? Because we want, we've always said that we wanted to be ready for a possible pandemic. We also, to be clear, want it broad spectrum because so many people are dying of viral infection in poor countries. And the idea is a single drug is much cheaper to develop than multiple drugs. And these people don't have the money to pay already for a single drug. Imagine multiple ones. Also, the idea was we need a drug that is ready for viruses we don't know yet. Right? And these are called emerging viruses. Coronavirus is one of them. Imagine that I were to find infinite funding, which I think you know it's not possible, but and that everything goes well, that I'm uh, super lucky. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, in that case, I think I would uh, um, be uh, able to do this in a year, a year and a half. One nice thing, I mean, there's not many nice things we can say, but about this pandemic is it has shown the world willingness to go towards open science. I mean, the, the response, scientific response, I'm just talking about that, um, to coronavirus was so much better than to SARS. Data were shared super quickly. Uh, everybody has been helping everybody, it's great. One thing as a scientific community that we should learn more, um, honestly, is how we communicate to the public. We have to be a bit more clear when we talk to the public about what we're doing, what are the times involved, and what are the challenges involved. If not, we sell hopes that sometimes can be unjustified. I hope that more in general, a better attitude towards science arrives because, you know, when a things like this comes, the only possible solution is science. It can, it has to be a vaccine, the end game, maybe a drug can buy some time. Um, epidemiologists through their science have been ha allowing us to stay separate enough to slow down this. The only science can help us.